Kenya's economy appears to be on the cusp of remarkable growth, yet insurance is still just a fledgling industry. To speak about what is needed to boost the industry to a level where it can compete with other rapidly growing sectors is Stephen Wandera from the British American Insurance Company. Stephen, welcome. Thank you very much, Nick. Kenya's insurance penetration as measured against GDP is 3.2%, an increase from 27 in 2008. So what is needed to drive growth in this sector? The challenge that um, Kenya faces um, really is um, accessibility to the vast numbers of the people who are at the lower end of the pyramid. This really can only be done through um, investments in distribution, cost-effective distribution as well as suitable products. We believe that microinsurance is going to play a very big role in this regard and certainly a very significant investment is going to be required in order to finance innovation. So innovation is going to be the name of the game, investment of course, and um, we believe that that will turn things around. 90% of Kenya's population are without insurance, which has been attributed perhaps to a lack of trust in the industry. Why is this? The majority of people, as I said, um, do not have access to insurance. It's not that they don't need insurance. Um, in actual fact, one of the challenges that we have is that um, fundraising is actually used as a substitute for insurance and we call this the, the Harambe system. People get into trouble and members of the family or members of the public get together in order to raise funds to actually bail them out of trouble. We believe that this is going to end as insurance effectively penetrates to those people who don't actually have insurance at the moment. And we see um, microinsurance playing a very big role in this. We are uh, one of the major players in microinsurance and um, we are making significant investments in IT ourselves. We've launched a pilot with a leading mobile telephone communications company since last year and we expect to be able to launch nationwide within the next two to three months. And I know other companies have also been carrying out their research, Nick, um, in this particular regard. So I think the next two or three years are going to be very, very exciting and we're going to see a big change in this area. You mentioned uh, penetrating uh, the market and expanding your reach. Perhaps you can uh, expand on how you're going to make insurance more accessible. One of the ways that we're, we've already done so, um, Nick, is through bank assurance. We've been able to partner with um, six banks um, with the result that we have been able to insure over two million people during the last three years through credit life insurance covers. We um, have also embarked upon um, microinsurance and we are the um, leading and only insurer of um, Kenya's small scale um, tea farmers um, at, at the present time. We know that other companies are also carrying out various initiatives in this regard. The, the thing, of course, is that um, we're all pioneering. Nobody has ever done this before, but we believe we're going to figuratively crack the kernel within the next year or so. We believe that we're in a position as Britam to do this. We've invested, we've carried out the research, we've got the right strategic partners, and we believe that we should be able to take the lead in this regard, and uh, the situation in the country is going to change. And as the contribution from life insurance in Kenya is low, just a third of insurance, how does that bode for the economy and how does that compare to developed countries? Nick, it certainly does not compare with uh, developed countries. Um, amongst developing countries, however, it is not unusual. And um, within Africa, it's reasonably good. But going forward, obviously, there's a lot of room for improvement and we would like um, to... to take it to the level as an insurance industry that you would compare with other developing countries in Asia. So we believe that that can be doubled or tripled um, as a percentage of GDP. Life insurance demand is normally driven by the middle class. We have the biggest middle class um, in the region and it is growing in leaps and bounds. Um, this is a very positive outlook for life insurance in the country and certainly for capital formation because life insurance premiums are really very important when it comes to mobilization of capital and um, life insurance funds uh, therefore um, play a very big role in increasing liquidity in the capital markets they're used as funds for long-term investments and of course they also find their way into the credit market and that reduces the amount of public debt and also the cost of credit to the economy so we we see all these actually improving in future nick Following the Westgate siege, the demand for insurance against terrorism policies is expected to grow significantly. How do you manage this risk and what do you expect the prices to rise to? 
Nick, that was a terrible and traumatic event. Um, I know Westgate, that's actually our local shopping center um, as, as our family. And um, the good thing about the insurance status of um, um, the, the owner of that property and the biggest supermarket in that property is that they were actually covered um, for tourism cover. Right now, only one to two percent of insured in Kenya are covered for political terrorism and sabotage cover. Um, this cover has actually been available in the country for the last five to six years, uh, but we expect much greater uptake in future than before and because of the scale that we expect this to take particularly from corporates SMEs and even for individuals for motor vehicle uh, we actually expect um, tourism cover rates to come down and finally what is Britam's approach to corporate social responsibility Britam has been engaged in financial education um, for, for many years Nick um, and last year, our board took the decision to establish the Britain Foundation. This will be launched next year. It's going to have its own CEO. Its focus is actually going to be CSR. So we are going to be doing um, CSR in a much more structured way than before. But certainly, we will continue to be active in financial education. So those who have benefited from our activities can only expect um, much more um, in that regard. Stephen, thank you. Thank you very much, Nick.